So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here virtually, obviously, because of COVID-19 with the next star of West Indies cricket. He goes by the name of Shamar Holder. Shamar, congratulations, first of all, on New Zealand, on making your test debut. Hello, and how are you doing? Hi, good morning. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well as well. Really great to see you on TV, you know, playing in New Zealand. Um, that test debut, how special of a moment was that, Shamar? We all saw it. Um, we saw you get your cap. We're going to speak about that as well. But just the experience on a whole, how was it for you? A very special moment because um, it, it was something I always wanted to do, you know, coming up through the ranks. As a youngster, you're watching TV, you're seeing the, the older guys, you're seeing the guys on the TV playing and you're just waiting to, or you're just waiting for your opportunity to meet, to get at that level. So when I got the call, um, I was very excited. And then the night before, when I was told that you'll be playing tomorrow, you know, get some rest, don't be up. Um, it it was very very excited for me. Yeah, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you over that night before because I'm sure it could be very nerve wracking. But you know, you not playing the first test and then play, slotting in for the second test. Uh, how how was that? for you um, in terms of, was there anything different? Uh, was it tougher, you know, having watched that first one? Well, no, yeah, I took away a few tips from the first test, um, watching the, the, the New Zealand batsman, but I, I took away a few tips from the um, first test, asked a few questions, see how the wicket was playing um, as the days go, go on and, and stuff like that. So I was, I was ready for the second test. And in terms of that moment, Ian Bishop presenting the West Indies test gap to you Surely a special thing from someone who I believe is a legend in terms of West Indies cricket, a great, a stalwart um, in terms of, of the cricket. How, how big of a deal was that for you to get the cap and receive it from someone like Ian Bishop? Yeah, well, getting, getting the cap to start with, you know, you know, was a very big moment because it's, it's like a dream come true. You know that you're being presented your cap. You're, you're starting a career um, as a professional cricketer at the highest level. And they also getting it from me and Bishop, it was a very, very good, um, it's, um, it was very good getting it from me and Bishop because I knew him for a while um, from on a 19 workup. We spoke a few times, you know, um, cricket around the world and stuff. So I really appreciate him giving me the cap. And what we saw him have a, a pretty lengthy conversation with you. What were some of the things he told you? Because obviously, he's very experienced when it comes to representing his nation for a long time. Ah, uh, you just say, um, congrats, you know, well, well done. Um, it, it's the moment you was winning for. Um, keep, keep striving, keep working hard, and I'm just gonna do my best. And then, so you got the cap. You were on the field, had a ball. You know, you started extremely well, and then got the first wicket of Tom Latham. How much of a relief was that to get that first one under your belt? Well, it was quite, it was quite um, relaxed, you know, just coming in, just telling myself, um, just, just do you, you know, just do you, don't try to, don't try to bowl too fast, don't try to overdo it, just do you, you know, put the ball in the right areas, um, just try to execute everything. It was, a, it was a lot of hard work then leading up to the test match, even before um, in England and stuff. So it was just to come out and execute what I, what I had practiced and stuff, and then I, Pull a few balls at him, and then he he nicked one. It was a it was a relief that I actually got my first test wicket. And in terms of New Zealand, the conditions that you face, would you say they're favourable to someone like you who's a fast bowler? Or how how did you rate the conditions in New Zealand in terms of bowling conducive? I would say um, the pitches are good. You know, enough grass, um, a lot more bounce, uh, and it might quicken up as the um, as the days goes on and. Um, the ball, the ball stays no longer because of the, the conditions, you know, because of the, the grass and the pitch and the outfield and stuff. So it still have a, a, a shine on the ball for a long period of time. Um, the only thing is that the kookaburra ball, it doesn't really swing. So it's kind of hard to, to get the ball to move, really. So it just going to hit the right areas and, and one might, might move, one might move here or there. So it just had to work with the conditions. Yeah, and you, you replaced someone that I know you look up to a lot in Kimar Roach. Obviously, he had his own things dealing with in terms of his, the, lot, the passing. This is his dad, and we really wish uh, him our condolences. But you also have guys like Shannon Gabriel, who you bowled with, Jason Holder as well, who you know very well, your Barbados captain. How comf comforting was it to make your debut alongside these guys that have been doing it at this level for a long time? 
Well, it was my first time playing with Shannon, um, actually, but it was good, you know, I know what Shannon could do. And he, he come and he showed that he was the senior, um, the senior bowler in the game. Uh, I played with Jason a couple of times and we just talk and, and discuss what, what the plans were, me coming to bowl or, or coming back to bowl and what I was looking to do. And, and he worked with me very well, you know, um, I suggested a few things and he, he, he went with it or I would ask a question and, or he, and he would say something. So it was very clear in terms of, it was a very clear uh, debut for me, you know, I didn't have any, any problems, you know, every, um, all the players made me feel welcome in the team and everything went smooth. That's really great to hear, Shamar. Um, and then for the final question on that tour, obviously being your first time playing Test cricket, what are some of what were some of the instant differences that you were able to observe uh, right away? The things that you were very different to playing at such a high level, the highest level, um, as opposed to where you would have played before at the first class circuit and other places for Barbados. Well, the start your training is very intense. Um, your training is very intense from ball one as as a line, you know, but now we've got COVID, so. You got the quarantine stuff first, but after that, your training is very intense. Um, the global things different planning and, and stuff is a lot different. Um, you have an analyst, a cricket analyst. Yes, you got a cricket analyst doing in, in regional, but you tend to break down everything to a T um, at the at the other level, and then also uh, the conversations and, and stuff we have during during games uh, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and then. It, it never seemed to be to be getting rested, but you see me get get back to your time and eat, and you see me think to go again. So that, yeah, that's another thing. Well, Shamar, it was an excellent tour for you, in my opinion, and for a lot of fans, West Indian fans' opinion. It's great to see you, you know, emerging in in West Indies cricket. From the time you took thirty six wickets at the first class level, I'm sure a lot of people thought, you know, you were the next big thing when it came to pace bowling. So we really congratulate you for that. I want to speak to you a bit now about the upcoming series. Uh, Bangladesh, which is, is, is scheduled to begin very shortly um, in a couple of weeks' time. First of all, you're in the one-day international team and not the test team. How, before we even get into that, how excited are you for touring another place, which I'm not sure if you've been before, but touring another uh, place and representing the West Indies? Well, I've been to um, Bangladesh before. Um, and then I work out with it, Bangladesh, yeah. So um, that was that was one day cricket. Um, me being in the in the one day side, it was a it was actually a surprise, but you know um, I'm still thankful because I'm I'm in I'm, I'm I was selected, mm -hmm. and then also uh, we get a chance to to show that I'm not only a one dimensional um, cricketer in terms of right ball only, so I can also show my worth in in white ball cricket. Yeah, just let's touch on that a bit because obviously the initial reaction from when the team was announced is a lot of people were like. They were really upset that you were in the test team. But having seen the conditions and obviously Bangladesh being very spin conducive, and as you said, you're still in the one-day team. Were you sort of disappointed? Was there a feeling of relief that, as you said, you were still in the ODI team? Or how, was, how did you actually feel when you saw the, when you heard, when you got the call about what you would be doing for the West Indies? Um, before I left New Zealand and I, I knew we were going to Bangladesh, um, I kind of told myself that, I gotta wait and see what happens because we know we're gonna bang it out. A lot of spin balls and stuff, so it wasn't really a, a disappointment. It wasn't really a disappointment, I would say. And I, as I say, I, I got included in the ODI side, so I was so happy that I was actually traveling with the team. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a circuit where the world will get to see a different side of Shamar Holder because obviously we know that you're a very good white ball bowler as well. We saw you with the St. Lucia Zooks this year in the CPL. We've seen you for Barbados at the Super 50, so we're very excited to see what you can produce in that circuit as well. But Shamar, as I, obviously I know you're a very busy man, so I don't want to keep you too long. This is your rest period. What would you say, you know, we had, we're, we're at the end of the calendar year 2020. What would you say are some of your major goals now that you're in a West Indies shirt for the West Indies in 2021 and the future beyond? Um, one would be to play as much test as I could play and all. Um, I would like to get up in the numbers, uh, wicket numbers in terms of the 250 and, and stuff like that. But that will only come with, with playing a lot of um, test cricket. It won't come easy and, and remaining fit, that's one. And then also, as I just said, play at least two formats for, for West Indies. And it would be, for me, my choice would be test and, and 50 over. But we'll see how, how things go along the, along the line. 
Oh, you've almost ticked that box. Shamar, thank you so much for taking this time out. We really, really can't wait to see what you can produce, you know, for West Indies Colors. I think you bring a new sense of energy. You bring a sense of enthusiasm for a lot of West Indies fans. I can speak on behalf of myself and a lot that I know. So we're really excited to see what you, Shamar Holder, can produce for West Indies cricket. And no pressure, but just know that uh, the entire West Indies nation is, is relying on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me again.